I'm super excited to be here. I'm a big fan of TED and TEDx. I think these events are wonderful. Um, so I am the CEO and one of the co-founders of AntiAgingGames.com. And today I'm going to give you the top 10 tips to keep your brain young. They are tips to help reduce your, your risk of early memory loss. Uh, and what I want you to do is, if you like the tips, I'd like you to share them with as many people as possible, with friends and family. Uh, I'm actually going to show you the website where you can get a copy of the tips, so don't worry too much about taking notes. Uh, we literally, my scientists and I literally went through 17,000 studies to come up with the tips that I'm going to share with you today, as well as the tips that are in our games and on our site. But before we start, I want to tell you a few things. First off, I'm not a doctor. I make games for a living. So um, <laughs> this is not medical advice. This is sim simply a starting point for you to speak with about your, about your future health with your doctor. Uh, secondly, it's all good news, so don't worry, I'm not going to terrify you with anything. Third, I'm not here to sell you anything. Uh, the games, we're actually going to give you a VIP code so you can have free access to the games. Um, so don't worry, no, no supplements, no snake oil, nothing like that. Just, just pure, you know, pure tips with no ulterior motive. Um, this whole thing, uh, so let me give you the email that... Um, so if you actually send an email to tips at antiaginggames.com, you'll get a copy of the tips, as well as a link to see the whole tip, all of the tips on the website, or you can just go to antiaginggames.com uh, and, and click on the brain tips section. So this whole thing started four or five years ago when one of my friends' mom got Alzheimer's. And while I was watching my friend deal with this and just struggling with it, she was struggling with it emotionally, physically, financially, I noticed that there was this unspoken but very, very deep belief that she too was going to get Alzheimer's, that it was entirely genetic, that, that she was doomed to, to have this happen to her eventually. And, uh, and that's just not true. That is absolutely not true. Um, only, depending on who you ask, only 5 to 8% of Alzheimer's is linked to a single gene to begin with. And there's a study that shows that when you have two identical twins, um, and one gets Alzheimer's, they're identical twins, you expect the other one to get Alzheimer's 100% of the time. That doesn't happen. 21% of the time, the other twin doesn't get Alzheimer's or gets it so much later that it's unrelated to, to that genetic basis. Uh, so I'm here to tell you about that 21% and what lifestyle changes you can make to actually help reduce your risk of early memory loss. And the good news is everything that I'm going to tell you is easy, it's free, and you can do it starting today. So. Um, Without further ado, I will uh, talk about the first tip. So the first tip, and if you walk away with nothing else, just walk away with this one. Fast walking is fantastic for your brain and your heart. So fast walking 30 minutes a day, five times a week, is linked to 33% less Alzheimer's. If you actually include vigorous aerobic exercise that gets your heart rate up, that will, uh, three times a week, at least 20 minutes, uh, that actually reduces your risk uh, down to 50%. So fantastic news. Um, if you can't walk comfortably, what you want to do is uh, water walking, cross-country uh, skiing, or if you, if, you, if you know someone in a wheelchair, uh, tell them to use a hand wheel. Any aerobic activity that, that uh, basically pushes the blood into your brain faster, pushes the oxygen and nutrients into your brain faster, helps things repair, pushes the waste out of your brain, that is fantastic for you. Your doctor will tell you that if you haven't exercised at all, um, what's really important is for you to just start getting into consistent exercise. So you, you may start with 10 minutes a day. So I don't know about you, but I am incredibly lazy when it comes to exercising. Um, just incredibly lazy. Exercising for the sake of vanity never motivated me, because I just figured plus or minus 10, 20 pounds, who cares? But <laughs> it's true. It's just not motivating. But when I read this study, you know, Avoiding Alzheimer's and in maintaining your freedom and independence later on in life, hugely motivating. So I started walking, and I got to tell you, it increases your energy. Um, you drop weight, and, and you just feel so much healthier and happier. Uh, so definitely recommend that. Second tip is to uh, play mentally engaging games. So studies show that any kind of learning, any kind of mind engaging gameplay is fantastic for you. The keys are that it has to be interactive, mind engaging, uh, it's extra good if it's fun. So passive entertainment is like watching TV or daytime napping. Um, 
<laughs> Interactive entertainment includes playing brain fitness games like an on antiaginggames.com, but you actually don't even need our games. Any kind of learning is fantastic for you. So you can play chess, you can play bridge, uh, you can learn a new instrument, complicated dance, or language. As if there's a social component or a physical component, even better, so learn ballroom dancing. And what's funny is you don't actually have to be good at it at all. So you can try taiko dancing, flamenco guitar, it doesn't really matter. You're, you're, you're doing different things than what you usually do during the day. So your brain is growing, it's growing new neural connections, and uh, it's, it's just fantastic for you. Third tip, avoid poisons. Everybody knows about lead and smoking. Um, what you may not know is that smoking doubles, smoking in midlife doubles the rate of dementia later. Uh, and what I didn't know was that even that occasional cigarette, the social cigarette or social cigar, causes your capillaries to act like they're being poisoned because guess what? They're being poisoned. So um, <laughs> you want to avoid that. Uh, you also want to avoid the, uh, the jury's out on aluminum. They don't know the studies are inconclusive, but if you can avoid it, please do. Um, you also want to avoid toxic substances in your everyday life. So there's a website called cosmeticsdatabase.com. And you can literally put in your shampoo, your, your toothpaste, your soap, your makeup, your sunscreen, and all of your cleaning products. And it pops out how toxic it is on a scale of 1 to 10. And you can find out what's toxic and what's, what's a safer alternative to the things you're using. Fourth tip, uh, being social is incredibly good for you. So there's a Harvard study that shows that people who have five social ties and the people who they spend time with, who they really enjoy, the people at work don't count. You don't really enjoy them, if you're honest with yourself. <laughs> uh, so spend time with those people. The people that did that had half the rate of cognitive decline as the people who were the most isolated. Isolation is terrible for human beings. So super important that, uh, that you stay social. If you don't have a lot of friends, if you just moved, if your friends are negative and you're getting rid of them, after the last tip that I tell you, um, <laughs> Try looking at places like the Red Hat Society, the American Association for University Women. I'm sure men, there's men's groups that are <laughs> equivalent, but I don't know what they are. Um, <laughs> Co-ed groups. And then also, volunteering is a fantastic place to meet really high quality new friends. Uh, volunteermatch.org is great, idealist.org. If you're in LA, uh, laworks.com has a lot of projects, phenomenal place. Um, next uh, is having a purpose and life direction is fantastic for you. So uh, researchers at Rush, Rush University Medical Center found that the people with the highest purpose and life direction had 2.4 times less dementia than the people with the lowest. Um, and what this means for you is you can pick any cause outside of your immediate circle of yourself, your friends, your family, and your acquaintances, any cause that's important to you. It uh, doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's meaningful to, for you, and just work on it uh, regularly. Um, that's great for you, it's great for society, um, and it, you know, teach other people to do that too. If you think about it, the people in this room, the generations, the two generations above me, were the ones who kicked down the doors of sexism and racism, and they're now kicking down the doors of homophobia. There's a lot more work to be done. So pick any cause that's important to you and go out there and do it. Um, your brain will thank you and society will thank you. Uh, next one is to relax. Relaxation is fantastic for you. I told you that this would have good news. Um, so go to the spa, relax, whatever you need to do. Um, meditate, yoga, uh, reading a book. I like relaxing in motion. I like walking and through nature and things like that. So whatever you need to do, it's really good because what happens is stress actually shrinks your brain. And you don't want that. Stress rewires your brain. It affects memory. It affects de decision making. Uh, it actually ends up messing with your emotional regulatory system. So it's, it's not good for you. I was working at this day job funding anti-aging games, um, and it was really stressful as I was reading the study about how stress shrinks your brain. <laughs> and uh, and I, it said that the people who had the high stress jobs, low control, multiple bosses telling you opposite things uh, had the worst <laughs> stress and brain shrinkage. And uh, I was like, oh my god, that's my job. So <laughs> I decided to quit. Um, I ended up leaving shortly thereafter. But if you're in that job, start you know, looking for other jobs. You don't need that. Your, your health is much more important. So next tip is to partner with your doctor. A good doctor is prevention oriented. So, most people stay with their doctors because that person is nice or familiar. That's not a good reason to stay with a doctor. 
You want someone who understands prevention, understands nutrition, understands exercise, understands the importance of stretching, understands the interactions between things. The reason why is I can tell you broccoli and cauliflower twice a week is fantastic for you, decreases a lot of different types of cancers by at least 20%. If you have a thyroid problem, a thyroid problem, sorry, that actually makes the thyroid problem worse. So a good doctor knows that. It's impossible for you to try to keep track of this stuff yourself. So a good doctor will tell you how your supplements are interacting with things. Um, and it's just really important for you to do that because things are, are really intertwined and interactive. Um, you generally want to get most of your vitamins from fruit anyway, fruit and vegetables, um, and not use supplements. But you might, your doctor might ask you to use some supplements too. And a good doctor knows how to do that. So for instance, vitamin B12, is linked to uh, not having enough vitamin B12 is linked to memory loss. But you can't just take supplements because you don't know if it's absorbing or not. So a good doctor knows to, how to measure this in your bloodstream to see if it's absorbing. And if it's not absorbing, then you need a monthly shot. So pick a good, good doctor and really partner with that person uh, to go forward in life. Next tip is to protect your head. People who have head, head injuries um, have two to four times the rate of Alzheimer's. If you've had a head injury in the past, don't worry, it's, there's a lot of factors, what part of your head got hit, how long you were unconscious for, things like that. But know going forward that you have to protect your head. Um, wear a helmet when you're bike riding. Uh, the place that you're more likely to, to get um, hit in the head is in your car. So always wear your seatbelt. Um, always pick a safer car. Make that one of your primary screenings. And never text while you're driving. The people who text have 23 times the accident rate as the people who don't. Uh, it's literally equivalent. One study showed that it was equivalent to drinking four drinks and getting behind the wheel. So if someone's texting in the car, tell them to pull over. If it's that important, pull over. Um, and uh, last, second to last tip is uh, the Mediterranean diet is fantastic for you. It's one of the only proven diets to just really, really be good. They, they also call it eating colorfully. Uh, Mediterranean diet involves seven to 10 servings of fruits and vegetables per day. I know that sounds like a lot, but it actually, it's really hard to gain weight off of fruits and vegetables. So you actually end up filling up with that and, and losing weight. Um, fresh is best, steamed is second best. Uh, Mediterranean diet people also eat a lot of fish, preferably wild fish, uh, twice a week. They eat nuts, um, almonds, walnuts, preferably raw, not salted. Um, beans, legumes, nobody knows what a legume is, so um, th those, are, those are peanuts and beans. Um, and, uh, and there's a real social component to, to the Mediterranean Village diet as well. So the last uh, tip that I'm going to give you is that positive outlook matters, and it matters a lot. If, if you had asked me as a scientist how much I think this matters, I would say it matters a little bit, but it turns out that it matters much more than anybody ever thought. Um, what happens is that uh, there was a study called the Nun Study. They tracked 678 nuns over the course of their lives. Um, and a lot of the nuns even gave permission that upon their death, they could be autopsied. They opened up their brains to see uh, what was going on and what the correlation is with Alzheimer's. They found that the nuns who had the highest rate of uh, the, the highest usage of positive emotion words, so the highest positive outlook, not only aged better and lived longer and lived healthier lives, but also what was really startling was in a few cases when they opened up the brains of these people and they looked inside, there were ta tangles and plaques that are associated with Alzheimer's, but they didn't have the symptoms that of Alzheimer's. So there's this neuroprotective effect to positive outlook that is really, really great. And scientists are gonna need to study it, but just so you know, that's there. The thing that you can do for yourself is eliminate your negative self-talk, um, talk back to it. Your brain doesn't know the difference between true and false. So so talk back to it, get rid of your negative friends, replace them with more positive ones, um, and, and just remember that you know, seeing the opportunity in all challenges is a really good thing. Learning the lessons and mistakes and then letting go is a really good thing. And finally, um, wanted to just share the VIP code with you. If you go to antiaginggames.com and you use the VIP code TEDx uh, VIP or TED VIP, no spaces, you can get a free month um, of anti-aging games. You also get a better rate. You get our friends and family rate of $9.95 per month instead of $12.99 if you choose to, um, if, you, you, if you like it and keep it. Uh, and we donate all of the profits, 100% of the profits from the TEDx VIP codes to, uh, 
to uh, various charities. I mean, we, our, our basic uh, goal is to improve lives around the world. In the US, what that means is uh, sponsoring Alzheimer's prevention research and, um, and uh, cancer prevention research, dementia prevention research, as well as some cure research. Overseas, it's not really a matter of taking people from um, you know, 75 or 85 to 100. It's more a matter of taking people from 5 to 35 using clean water access, malaria nets, and things like that. Uh, education, medicine. So that's what we're doing. Uh, in general, the company donates 20% of its pre-tax profits to charity. So if you like these tips, if you found, if you found them valuable, please share them. We, we went through years of research to be able to give these to you today. Thank you very much.